Okay, I'm still just rough cutting my side duct together. And because I'm going to want to blend the fur of one seal reference with the other seal reference to get this body, I also want to make sure I can see the other flipper, you know, that that anatomy is strong. So instead of rough cutting it just with my lasso, and doing this, just erasing out where it is, that makes the overlaps really difficult. Instead, I'm doing a soft erasing. So another way you can use your, your lasso is to kind of give you a stencil. So by stenciling around where it is, I know what I'm trying to erase and what I'm trying to avoid. So that works okay. Another way I could do it is I could take this and internally composite it. You know, from this layer. And just Command J. So photo piece kind of sticking on me a little bit. Move that copy up above and then use that 100% soft edged eraser to erase away from it and blend it in. And since this overlap seems pretty important, I might go ahead and use my lasso with a feather, I'd say three pixels here for the softness of the texture. So remember, this is a copy, so I'm trying to be non-destructive. Cut away a little bit more sharply. There we go. Then I can use that eraser. And blend this part a little bit. So remember hard edges always are a telltale sign of compositing. Oops. So you want to address that. And the little ghosting images, you know, sometimes that takes some detail work. But if I start using a brush at this 150 pixels per inch resolution, if I start using a brush that's smaller than 50, then it's, it's not worth it. It's uh, kind of too nitpicky for what's going to be seen on screen. So you try to work efficiently as well. OK. So now what's kind of unresolved is the back here. And so again, just like I did with the feet, which I kind of like how they work with this tummy, is that I'm going to grab this side, just like I did for the feet, instead of trying to find all new reference, I'm going to try to internally composite it. Then I'm going to flip it horizontally.
And if I just did that, it just looks really copy pasty, right? So you can internally composite, but then you definitely want to augment it. So I'm going to stretch it. I'll try to store it. And then warp. So I want it to work with the spine I already have. It's going to give Psyduck that kind of avocado shape. And remember, the head is its own folder group. So I can still play with the proportion of the head. I think I'm going to end up making the head bigger still. But that's looking better. It's less copy pasty, right? Then I go in with my 100% eraser, soft edged. and bigger and blend this side out. And because it's fur, soft texture onto soft texture, I can go to a lower opacity eraser and kind of merge between the two. And then tuck it under the arm. Okay, so now I've rough cut the major elements. I am missing a tail. And what I want to notice is how it's changed in anatomy from my sketch. So in my sketch, the pelvis is angled this way, but in my composite, the, the pelvis is lined up with the feet and with the rib cage and is angled in a similar way to the head and chest, which is also more believable. But does the silhouette work pretty well? It does. It would be better to have a fin kind of making a shape out there, but again, not worth finding extra reference for that to me at this point. I think the things that are working about the creature are working. So what can I do? Now I'm going to, going to make a folder for the body components that I've rough composited together. And I can label it just like I did for the head. And then bring them in. I'm going to try to bring them all in at once. So hold down shift, select them all, and then just drag and drop onto the folder layer. There we go. So now they're all in there. So now they're all together and the head's all together. And that way, I can just select the folder as long as auto select under the move tool isn't checked. And I can hit control T. And I can move everything together and kind of line it up with where the head is and get what I think might be the best proportions to fulfill my idea, right? Good. Now this is without any lighting adjustment. This is without any color adjustment. This is just rough cutting things out and allowing there to be some overlap. But this will also tell me the angle of the tail. So what's the most boring part of the silhouette? It's this back. It's just one continuous curve, which doesn't give it a lot of movement. So some ta a tail coming off would be quite nice. And what I had chosen in my reference for that was this bird thinking I could use that tail and kind of bring those bird elements back. And we'll see if it works in this position. The reference is plenty big enough. So I can go ahead and shrink it down a little as a smart object. And then rough cut it out. Duplicate the rough cut, delete the reference, 
And now I want to move that behind the body. And control T, flip it horizontally, rotate it, shrink it, probably end up warping and curving it a little. Because it needs to feel like it comes from that spine. Which can be tricky. So at this point, I'm going to just grab all of it and move them all, all those layers, down a little bit so I have room to play with this tail. And I'm not so worried about matching my sketch anymore, right? And I have enough resolution to make it this size, so I'm going to leave it at this size. Because bigger is better if you have the resolution to do it. So let's keep working with this tail. I'm going to try distorting it. Yeah, broadening it out a little bit. And then warping it. Giving a little bit of that curve so it feels like it comes naturally from the spine. So lots, lots of trial and error. But I do like the feather texture that this tail gives me, especially in there. Kind of brings the feathers and the fur together with the webbed feet in a way that I like. Okay, so can that curve believably connect through the pelvis at the back? It's a little tricky with the feet being where they are, so I think I need to move it in a little bit more and probably just widen it. Nope. What do I need? I need Control T. Try distorting it this way. Yeah, so that will be more believable. All right. So I'll go ahead and label that. And now I've rough cut all my pieces. I can go ahead and center them, knowing that now I'm a little bit above 8, eight by 10. You can see my box there. This is more like 14 inches by 11 inches or 12 inches. Nothing wrong with that. And so I might widen my guides to now fit around my new creature. Because if I can have more resolution, and I think my program can handle it, then that's fine. And then I'm able to crop, keep as much white space around it as you think you need. to the guides, and that will save a lot of memory. And now it's a good time to save. So then I can take my sketch and kind of tuck it down into the corner because the sketch has served its purpose. But I might want this little Psyduck figure just on its own. So I might duplicate that out from my sketch and then might as well make it 